We are honored to be joined by Steve Sweeney, the former president of the state Senate and chair of the advisory board for the Sweeney Center for Public Policy at Rowan University, one of our higher ed partners. Steve, good to see you. Great to see you, Steve. Let's talk about New Jersey's fiscal future, an initiative that we're involved in to try to figure out what the heck our future is and what we need to do to get on the right track. First of all, how far off the right track are we, Steve? We're way off, unfortunately, Steve. And, you know, New Jersey does year-to-year -year budgeting. Many states do multiple years budgeting. County governments do five-year budgets, six-year capital plans. Uh, this is not the best way of doing budgeting. And, you know, there's another thing called consensus forecasting where the legislature and the, the administration get together and they get to decide what the numbers are going to look like. And you get a much more honest process. You know, the, the books don't get caught like they normally do. Uh, one year, one of the governors uh, said we're going to have 7% rateable growth. You know, Steve, it's in that, and that had to score it that way. So what we're trying to do is get us on much more sound footing so that the promises that are being made, like I, I want to congratulate Speaker Coughlin for coming up with a great idea to try to help our seniors. But the, what the problem is if the money's not there. You know what I'm saying? That's the things we're concerned with. By the way, Steve Sweeney, the Senate, former Senate president, is talking about this deal. We're taping at the end of June, right before, ironically, the budget uh, will allegedly be struck. It's a senior citizen property tax. Um, well, it's just, frankly, it's uh, $6,500, capped at $6,500 if you make less than $500,000 if you're over 65 years of age. Are, are you saying, Senator, that we don't have the money for that? What I'm saying is that there's choices that are going to have to be made, Steve. You can fund anything you want. It's as long as you, as you have to prioritize. But if, like the think tank, or economists, I actually get to do stuff that I couldn't do before because, you know, you have to be partisan. Excuse so, me, we're talking about the Sweeney Center at Rowan. Yes. That's the yeah. think tank. Go ahead, Steve. Thanks, thanks, Steve. And and I have independents, Democrats, Republican fiscal experts. And when, when they're in a room working together, it's, Steve, it's amazing. You know, like all the, all the political BS goes out the window. And what they said is there's an 80% chance by 2025, we're going to be between 12 and a half to $15 billion, $18 billion short between 2025 and 2028. And this isn't including the speaker's uh, game plan, uh, you know, tax plan. So again, something's going to have to give here. Well, hold on, Senator. We just had this largesse from the federal government. We had a surplus, COVID money, et cetera. What, what are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is real numbers, Steve. You know, they, they, those federal dollars were one-time dollars. We're spending more money a year than we're bringing in. Income tax collections went down dramatically when they when the Treasury reported. I think it was a couple billion dollars. You know, so when you start looking at, and then the sales tax just came down, you know, uh, unexpectedly, revenues. So what we're saying is, yes, you can do a lot of things, but you're going to have to sacrifice other things to do that. You know, I want to talk offshore wind in just a moment, but Senator, let me ask you this. <clears throat> you understand politics, government better than most. You served on the county level. You were the top person in the state legislature. Um, and possibly we'll see in 2025 if you choose to run for governor. That being said, why the heck is it so difficult to have a candid, honest conversation about New Jersey's fiscal future, not just that your think tank, or at other places that take it seriously, but in government, state government, why, why, why is that so difficult? Hey, because people really have a hard time having that honest conversation. You know, you don't get a lot of kudos when you tell people the truth. People want, people want what they want the way they want it. And, and people like myself normally make enemies when you tell people, hey, listen, this is great, but you can't afford it. Or, or do it this way if you want to do it. Or you got to make some cuts. Yeah, or you got to make cuts. You got to make changes. Uh, you have to approach government differently. Like my point is, we're doing these rebate programs, but what we haven't done is what we were focusing on when I was in the legislature, which was shared services, school consolidations, trying to rein in costs to get the true cost of government 
First, you know, the legislature doesn't do property taxes. Property taxes local are government. local and county levels. So we're taking money to plug holes locally. And Steve, I can tell you a lot of times when you do find savings and you pass them back to the towns, I can tell you firsthand, they don't cut taxes. They just say, oh, now we can build the park we always wanted to build. Or we can put the synthet synthetic athletic field down. That's what happens. That's that's reality. Um, we're talking to former Senate President Steve Sweeney, the chair of the advisory board of the Sweeney Center for Public Policy at Rowan University. Um, Senator, let's talk about offshore wind. Where are we? What opportunity are we missing? Well, our great concern, and the reason why we're drawing so much attention to offshore wind right now is when we did the legislation, Steve, in 2010, the focus was Yes, we want to reduce carbon footprint. Yes, we want we we want it. We, we want to have clean energy, but it was manufactured. That's what drove me. It was my legislation with John Bersicelli in the assembly. We passed this to capture all the manufacturing to make it an American supply chain. And what's happened because there's been a disagreement on some federal tax credits that other states have already given to the wind developers. We were first in line. Everyone was coming to us to build manufacturing probably three to 4,000 manufacturing jobs. Now, because there's a disagreement right now between the legislature and the administration, it's we're, moving, we're losing our spot. It's like we're on the one foot line, we're ready to score a touchdown, and everyone's coming running after us and they're gonna tackle us. What's holding us up, Senator? Well, it, there has to be an agreement where the federal government uh, came out with uh, tax credits to develop offshore wind. We're already going to build Does the offshore wind. Does it take advantage of that? Other states have already said to these offshore wind producers, yes, because of inflation, higher interest rates, it's more expensive steel, uh, here's the tax credits. We have not done that. The legislature and the administration need to come together on it. And Steve, the thing I, I fear the most is Orsted, who was promising to bring a GE facility, turbine, nacelle facility, and blade facility to Salem, is now just inked a deal with New York State to put it up there. You know, the whole goal of Ulster Wind was to create the manufacturing jobs, to make it an American supply chain, you know, uh, jobs program that, you know, one, we're cleaning up the environment, but most importantly, we're creating jobs here in New Jersey so people get jobs and go to work and make place better. We are honored to be joined by Steve Sweeney, the former president of the state Senate and the chair of the advisory board of the Sweeney Center at Rowan, F for Public Policy at Rowan University. Senator, thanks so much, my friend. Thanks for having me, Steve. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Senator Sweeney. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, PSENG, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, Operating Engineers, Local 825, IBEW Local 102, NJM Insurance Group, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and by the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by New Jersey Monthly. NJM Insurance Group has been serving New Jersey businesses for over a century. As part of the Garden State, we help companies keep their vehicles on the road, employees on the job, and projects on track. Working to protect employees from illness and injury, to keep goods and services moving across the state. We're proud to be part of New Jersey. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered.